This is the video tutorial for working with map projections and we're going to have a part one and a part two and this will be part one where we'll be doing large scale mapping and we'll be using MapZen's Metro Et Extracts which is a project that extracts OpenStreetMap data for particular cities, global cities. To get started let's take a look at our steps. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is actually download our in-class lab data which is at this bit.ly link and in this particular folder we're going to have a world feature file that will show us the outline of our our uh, countries we're going to have a grit uh, graticules folder and then also a utm zone feature so we're doing part one here which is a large scale mapping and we have essentially eight steps so the first thing is we're going to extract our OpenStreetMap data and we're going to use this particular format, which is called imposm.shapefile. This is the address. It's maps in at uh, Metro Extracts. You'll have access to this document, so you'll be able to download um, this text. And we're going to uh, connect to ArcMap. We're going to be using the Land Uses Polygon feature. We're going to overlay to the UTM grid, and we're going to figure out which uh, UTM zone our city is within. We're going to reproject. That's step number four. We're going to reproject our city to the correct UTM zone. We're going to take a look at the attribute table and we're going to run what's called summary statistics on it to, um, to develop um, a summary of our land uses uh, for our particular city. We're going to extract the largest land use in size and we're going to make a new shape file for that. And we're going to convert uh, that notation to square miles so that we can insert it as text. So we can, we're going to be able to figure out what's the largest land use category based on OpenStreetMap data for our selected city. We're going to build a final map and uh, we are going to export that out as 11 by 17 landscape or portrait depending on the orientation of our particular city. So if it's a horizontal orientation we'll probably choose landscape and then if it's um, uh, more of a vertical uh, orientation we may pick portrait. Okay, so to get started here we're going to navigate to MapZen's uh, Metro Extracts and I'm here at that page and they have two interfaces here. They have a full list of cities so you can go A to Z on your cities if you know exactly which one you want to pick. But uh, what's nice is they also have a little map interface here, interactive map interface, and we can pick a city based on this map interface. Now what's important to keep in mind as we're doing this is that we're going to have some cities that are going to be south of the equator and some cities that are going to be north of the equator. If we're north, when we pick our UTM projection, we're going to be picking a north um, component. And if we're south, we're going to be picking a, south, a southern component. So if you pick one of these very large cities, these one of these large squares, you're going to get a lot of data coming as your data download. Uh, I would suggest for this particular project, maybe picking a smaller city. And uh, I think what I'll do is, is pick something that's obviously in a northern latitude. Uh, so I know just off the bat that I'll be using UTM North. Uh, maybe I'll pick a city close to Istanbul here that is small, that's not Istanbul. So how about this guy right, right below here? This is Bursa, Turkey. So if I click on my square there, it's going to bring me directly to Bursa, Turkey. And I want to be downloading the IMPOSM, which is in the middle here. It's 2.5 megabytes in this case. So I'm going to download that, and I'm going to stick that on my desktop for this tutorial. So I'm just going to do a cut. And I'll paste that into my desktop. I've also downloaded already and unzipped the class 4 assignment data. So in here we can take a look and we have Graticule's UTM grid in our World Boundaries File 2002 file. And let's go ahead and look at uh, Turkey. So I'm going to extract all. And as I do this it'll unzip. And let's take a look at what we got here. So we have a lot of different features, a lot of different shape files, and we're going to be working with in particular the land uses feature. I'm going to disregard everything else except land uses. So let's go into ArcMap. I just have a blank uh, ArcMap MXD mapping session. I want to connect to these folders to get started. So I'm in Arc Catalog right now, and I go ahead and say connect to folder. I'm going to connect to Turkey, and then I'm going to also connect to my assignment data. So I'm connected to those two guys. Uh, let's go ahead, and the first thing we want to do is bring in, under our folder connections, our actual land use shapefile. And 
we can see that we have land uses tabular data DBF and a tabular data DBF. That's not what we want. We just want to have the land uses.shp, the shape file. So we click on that and say edit. And here is my land uses for this particular city. So I can kind of quickly surmise that this city actually has a horizontal orientation. That's very obvious. So what I'm going to do real quickly before I go any farther is maybe go ahead and set up our map page. So I'm going to go to layout view. And here, let's go ahead and just make this 11 by 17 landscape. So I'm going to go file, page printout, landscape. And this is going to be a tabloid side, 11 by 17. And I say OK. And I'm going to just do some rudimentary organization here. I'm going to zoom in a bit. Maybe something like that will probably work out pretty well. Maybe just a little bit closer. I'm going to create a bookmark now. So this is going to be uh, map one. So when I export, I'm going to go back to this bookmark, and it's going to bring me right to this particular location. And this will be my export map sheet. I do file save as I'm going to save this MXD inside um, class four assignment data. I'll just put it. I'm going to make a new folder here. I'm going to call it exports. And under exports, this is everything that's going to um, result from this particular assignment. I'll just put it here. So let's call this map one. Say save. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is. Um, I'm going to go back to my data window, my data view window. And what's important to take a look here and understand is that we're in decimal degrees. So if we go to our table of contents and we do a right click and we look at properties here, we can see that we are in WGS 1984. That's what it comes down from MapZen. That's Ohm Street Map uh, uses uh, WGS 1984 or a version, a close version of it. We're going to go to open attribute table and we can see under our attribute table we have types here. So we have cemeteries, parks, residential. We want to find out what's the largest land use uh, feature class according to OpenStreetMap data. We have an area column, but what's important to understand about this particular area column is that we're in decimal degrees because WGS 1984 is not a planar system. So we can't do a whole lot with this particular area calculation, but once we uh, project it, then we can do something with our area. So let's go ahead and figure out what UTM zone we're currently in. So the way that we do that is we're just going to simply go to layers, add data, and we are going to uh, import in. Under our assignment data, we want our UTM grid. So we add that. It gives us a warning. It says, uh, you know, you have two, uh, two systems here, and they may or may not be um, um, consistent in terms of the data frames. So we're going to roll with on-the-fly projection, essentially, and that's OK. So I'm just going to say close. It's still going to align correctly. And what I want to do here is I want to just zoom out a little bit. Let's, I'm going to do zoom to layer for my city. And he's sitting underneath. I'm going to bring him forward. And I'm just going to zoom out just a little bit so I can see the edge of my UTM grid. Okay, so my city is sitting in this corner. Luckily, everything, my full city, is within one UTM zone. Now, if you have a city that's split between two UTM zones, you're in a bit of a pickle because uh, part of your city is going to be uh, in one zone and part's going to be in another zone. And in that case, you're going to have some distortion, some area distortion. Not a fantastic amount, but probably enough that you would want to use a different map projection. Uh, for this mapping assignment, if you do by chance have a city that straddles two UTM zones, I would probably recommend just simply picking another city and get one that's definitively within a UTM uh, grid zone. So this one, if we do a um, little information tool here and click on it, we're going to be able to see that this particular zone is 35. And since I know for a fact that I'm north of the equator, this is going to be 35 north. So I want to reproject my city into this UTM zone, which is 35 north. So let's go ahead and do that now. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, go to Arc Catalog, or excuse me, to Arc Toolbox. And under Arc Toolbox, we're going to go into Data Management Tools. We're going to do projections and transformations. We're going to not define it because it's already defined as WGS84. We're going to reproject this or project it. So I click on project. And I'm going to input my land uses for Bursa Turkey. 
And this is an important uh, catch here. We would probably want to export this out as it's as an individual shapefile, but in this case, I don't want to do that because I want to send it to the default geo database where it actually builds out the uh, new area column. So I want to just send it to the default geo database. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it Bursa Turkey, and now this is UTM. The zone is 35 north or 35 in. So I'm just going to call it my, my city and then UTM zone 35 north. Now my output coordinate system, here's where I need to go pick it. So I go into projection coordinate systems and I'm going to go down to UTM and under UTM I'm going to go way down here to the bottom. I'm going to get WGS 1984 and I'm going to be in the north hemisphere and I'm looking for zone 35 north. So here it is. Its unit is a meter which is great. So we're going to be out of angular uh, units and into a meter. I'm going to say OK. And it's not going to do a geographic transformation because the original file is built on WGS84 and this one is also. So I go ahead and say OK. It's going to run for a second and it says, listen, you have a conflict between your map and your output. And that's, of course, because right now we're still in decimal degrees in the data frame. So I'm going to go to uh, take a look at my new file. Remember, this is sitting within the default geo database now. And I'm going to go to uh, take a look here. And I can see I have two new columns now. I have a shape length and a shape area. And now that area is being calculated not in decimal degrees, but in meters, in square meters. So uh, we're going to figure out, we're going to summarize here in just a second uh, per type um, the total amount of shape area. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to make sure that. Um, our data frame is going to be in uh, the same thing that our particular file is in here. So we want to be every, want everything to be in UTM zone 35. So to do that, what we want to do, let's get rid of our original land use feature because we don't really want that anymore. We're going to remove him. And let's get rid of our UTM grid. We don't really need that. We're going to remove that. So what's important here now, if we go to Turkey UTM and go to properties in the source, we can see that we're in UTM zone 35 north. Now that is not the case. I'm in layout view now for my map frame and I need to change that. So I'm just gonna go down to properties for the map frame, not for the feature itself, but for the map plane. And what I'm gonna do now is I have a couple options. I can go search for it or I can actually do what's called importing. So I'm gonna click on import. And now if I just navigate to my particular feature, it's gonna be in the default geo database. Um, I can just go ahead and get it. So I'm looking for Bursa. So it's going to be, you can see I have a lot of data sitting in here right now. I'm going to go find it. So it's going to be under my Bs. There it is. It's UTM zone 35 north. I'm going to add this. And we can see it comes in now as UTM zone 35 north. So as soon as I make this transformation, I'm going to have a data frame that's in UTM zone 35 north. And I'm also going to have a feature. And that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to say apply and say OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and save this MXD because it's going to update everything that I have currently in here. So I'll go ahead and save it. And as I do that now, now I can go back to my bookmarks and say, bring me back to map one bookmark. And then I can see my bookmark and uh, everything's good to go here in terms of mapping. Um, now what we want to do is we want to calculate now uh, a summary based on land uses. So we can see that we have these big polygons out here. Let's go ahead and click on one of these. So this is industrial, this one's parking, residential, forest. Okay, these are all different land types that have been categorized within OpenStreetMap. Let's go ahead and figure out which is the largest land use type for this city. That would be something that would be really interesting to find out. So to do that summary, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a right click and we're gonna go to open attribute table. And under the open attribute table, we are interested in the shape area, but we're really interested in summarizing based on type. So I'm going to click on type just to make it active and do a right click. And then what I want to do is I want to summarize. So I click on summarize. And what I want to do now is I want to go down. I don't want to click on anything except the shape area. And I just want the sum. I just want to know what's the total amount per type. So I click on sum. And I need to specify where I'm going to output this. So let's output it to our exports folder. This will be uh, in assignment data. This is sitting next to the MXD. And I'm going to call it, let's just call it LU uh, area. And we'll say save. Doesn't like that. Let's just click on. 
uh, oh, I see what's happening. Under save file type, if I'm saving outside of a geodatabase, uh, if I go into export, I want to save this as a dbase table. So I go ahead and save and say OK. And I want to add it to the map. Then we're going to go back up to table contents here, and we're going to look at our new table that's been created. So if I click on this and I go to open, it's going to have summarized all my different uh, types based on their total area. So let's go ahead and sort ascending now from small to large. And the one sitting very at the very bottom here is industrial land. Very interesting. So residential is right behind it. There's many different polygons. There's 188 polygons that amount to this size, but importantly, there's 27 uh, very large polygons that represent this total size right here. So we can summarize from OpenStreetMap data based on our UTM map projection that we produced um, that this city may be, depending on OpenStreetMap data, a very industrialized city, that that's a big land use within the city. Now, this square meters calculation is difficult to understand. Let's go ahead and copy this. So I'm just going to do a right click and say copy. And then I'm going to go up to, I'm just going to do a square meters to, let's say miles, square miles. There's many little converters online that we can use. So I'll just use this one. So square meter, I'm just going to copy my square meters. And so it's seven square miles total. Um, I guess I'll just get this whole number here of industrial land use in this particular city. So let me run that again. Okay, so it's 7.75. I guess I'll get that whole, whole number there. And then what I can do is part of your final map design, what I would like you to do is drop this into as a text file into your map design. So I'm in layout view right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert some text so I click on here, and this is kind of annoying. This happens oftentimes is it puts it right in the middle of your map, and you got to make it active and then move it around. So oftentimes you'll enact this by accident, and it'll be sitting there as a little teeny tiny piece of text, and you need to be aware that that can export out, and uh, that may not be something that you want. So let's click on text. Let's make it a little bit bigger font. So let's make this maybe 20, Arial 20. It's going to let us do that. doesn't seem to... Oh, well, let's just put it in here. So what we'll say here is that the pre... How about, let's say, the largest land use for Bursa Turkey is industrial at... And then... I don't need this long number. I'm just going to shorten this. Let's let's just call it seven miles. It's seven square miles. Then we'll say apply. OK. So that's kind of small. Let's see if we can change the size here. So what I did for the changing the size is I'm changing the symbol. And it's in a boring aerial font. I'll just make it bold and make it say, let's make it 20. And then what I can do is stick it down here in the bottom. I would expect that you'll take some time and design this map sheet uh, in a nice way. Right now I'm just kind of using Arial and just putting it in. The second thing that we want to do is we want to also insert for the data frame what the coordinate system it currently is in. So I'm going to go to insert dynamic text and I need to make sure I'm clicked on there and I'm going to go insert dynamic text my coordinate system. And so this is going to tell me I'm in W GS 1984 is the datum, and the, the projection, the map projection, is UTM Zone 35 North, which is great. So these are the two components that I would like you to have for your assignment turn-in, which is a data frame notation from dynamic text, and also a nicely designed um, text notation of the largest land use for your particular city. And then one last thing we want to do is we want to create a map that uh, is a... Um, two types. So we're going to have industrial versus all other land use types. So let's go ahead and go back to our original file here. And what we're going to do is open the attribute table. And we can see that we have a column type called type. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, search on type. So I'm going to do select by attributes. And I'm going to go into the type. So type equals get unique values. In this case, we know we want industrial because that's our largest land use for this particular city industrial and say apply it 
Okay, so there's all my industrials. I'm going to export this out as a new shapefile. So I just do right click, data, and I'm going to send this out to my exports file now. So I'm going to go to um, assignment for data, export this out. I'm going to export it out as a shapefile, and I'm going to call this Versa um, Industrial. And say save. And say OK. Now I have two files sitting on top of each other, and I'm going to make my original one. Let's make that just kind of a tan beige color. I'm not even going to have an outline color for it. And then on top of that, I'm going to maybe, maybe I'll make that a little bit darker. Maybe something like this. And then on top of it, for my Bursa Industrial, I'm going to go select, clear the selected feature so I don't have that cyan. And here, let's go ahead and make this, um, maybe I'll make it a black color, just so we can see it really well. So now I have a very simple map that shows two different land types. One is everything that's not industrial, and then the black polygons are industrial parcels, or industrial um, polygon features. So I could go ahead and develop a legend if I'd want it to. Um, it's up to you how you want to do your final map design, but these are the three characteristics or components of the map that I would like to have as the final turn in. One, a um, two-type map based on your predominant land use versus everything else, a coordinate system notation that you've derived from dynamic text and you want to make sure that you're seeing your UTM zone here, and then we want to just have a little text uh, insert that we've created and say something like the predominant land use or the largest land use for your city is whatever type it is uh, based on your uh, summary statistic and transfer it from square meters into square miles so it's nice and uh, summarized nicely and easily digested by your audience. And then of course um, to export this you're going to do a file export map and as you're exporting it you probably want your resolution to be pretty high so you have a nice clean map that's not pixelated and you're going to call this map one and this will be part of a two-part submission to class four map projections which will be map one map two and if you want to you might have a map three for the extra credit if you decide to do the extra credit okay so this is the first part part one uh, tutorial for this week's assignment and part two will be next